Um, so I kind of stumbled into wrestling. Um, you know, I was yoga. I started doing boxing and then I got hooked on MMA and I was like, well, I better learn the ground. So then I got sucked into jujitsu and wrestling was like the thing that I feared the most out of all of the things. I was like, I know it's so important and it's probably the most important um, for position because it really does control where you are. Um, so I learned that last and I ended up, I teach at a high school. So I ended up uh, volunteering with the wrestling team, uh, the boys first for two years. And then we got girls wrestling two years ago. So I got uh, a team of my own um, under the boys umbrella, but um, now it's emerging as an NCA, you know, emerging sport this year. So division one, hopefully on the, on the way. So um, it's a great compliment to jujitsu. I think both sports work, you know, so integrally together. If you understand one, it's going to improve your game in the other. So um, I'm really excited to share what I know. My friend Liz here, I'm going to use her kind of as my partner. And what I'm going to go through, like I said, is kind of a sequence. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go over the actual technique. I will show you some pointers, hopefully, that will help you a little bit um, for those that are more advanced. And then I'm going to give you kind of an exercise that if you're a beginner or you're somebody that's on your own during quarantine, you can just drill on your own and really like work on technique because you know, take it from someone who has a lot of damage to their body at this point. I've had a, a cervical fusion in my neck. I've had another slipped disc, a torn meniscus. Um, the better you are with your technique over time, the easier it's going to get. So, you know, kind of stick with it. Um, it's really helpful. So we'll get started here. Um, I'm going to start today with the double leg, which is a classic, obviously, wrestling move. Um, pretty high percentage along with the single leg if we're dealing with being on our feet. Um, obviously the whole goal of wrestling is to get the person down and control them as it is in jujitsu as well. Um, it's just a different way of controlling. Um, but like I said, they work together. So the double leg, I have my partner here, right? Um, the first thing I have to remember that if I'm going to take a shot is that I need to be able to clear her hands out of the way. Okay. So generally my double, uh, double leg is going to come from a clearing of the hands. I can pop them up, right? If she's grabbing on my collar. I can clear them this way and push them down. And then as I push down, her natural reaction is gonna to be to do what? Yeah, pull up, right? So what I'm going for for the double leg is I wanna take a penetration step, okay? Also known as a drop step. I'll show you the logistics of this. As I step, I'm gonna step with my heel first. I'm gonna move back so you guys can see a little bit, okay? Um, I'm gonna do it alone and then I'll show on you. Um, so I'm gonna take my heel, right? Drop, and I'm gonna change my level right? I want to be bending here. Um, and I don't want to shoot down into the floor, right? I want to bend and I want to go through kind of with my step. So as I take the step, I leave with my heel, I change levels, and then I drop my knee and I step back up. Okay. So that's the logistics of the double. Now, if I'm going on my partner, okay, I'm going to clear her hands out of the way. I'm going to take the same step, the heel, right? Change levels drop my knee, and I want to get low behind the back of her legs here, okay? Um, this is what most people know. I want to hit with my head on the outside, right? I want to have it up, my back up like this, and I want to be driving into her with my shoulder here and kind of pulling here. Now, what I want to show you if you are in advanced level for finishing your shots is going to be a way that is going to avoid a lot of us doing this like chasing around of the double. So if I just step up and I try to drive, this is what we see a lot. Like you're just going to chase her forever. Okay. So what I need to do is, is as soon as I hit here with the double penetration here, I'm going to take my head. I'm not going to drive it this way. I'm going to look this way and I'm going to step up with my left leg in front of her body here right and then obviously going to shuck her by i'm going to run through i don't want to put this front leg back up a little bit i don't want to put this front leg in between her legs that's going to lead to this whole chasing thing again right so i want to again come in upper level people especially you know as you, as you learn the shot i want to take my head face where i'm going step up and then run her down and lift the leg Okay, so what that accomplishes is it's going to allow me to run her into a side control. A lot of times what you'll see with a double leg is if you shoot straight forward and just down, you're going to get caught in a closed guard, which then is really annoying, as we know. 
Um, and if you're trying to control someone, I'll kind of give this aside too um, about the importance of wrestling. I don't want to like pull them on top of me. I want to basically control the situation however I can. Okay. So I don't really want to get stuck in a closed guard because it's annoying. If it happens, it happens, but that helps alleviate that problem. So I'll show you one more time and then we'll talk about some drills you can use for the double leg. So again, I want to clear a hand. I can go down from the back. I can go up. It depends what she's doing, right? So I can go here, come in here, step up, turn my head in front and drive. And then I've landed basically in a pretty good side control. Okay. So that's one tip there. Um, some exercises I can use to, to kind of drill this, um, obviously would just be doing the drop step over and over, make sure your back's up. I can do it without a partner. So I can go here, post, turn, and then shut by, right? And just kind of practice that movement. Um, if I have a partner with me, if you have somebody at home, they might not even be a wrestler, but mm -hmm. I can use this. I can just do the movement without hands sometimes, right? So I can come in here and I can turn and I can just run and push. I should be able to move her without using my hands. My hands just block the knees as they come over. So I'm driving through and I can keep doing that and that might help with the resistance. Um, another good one, if you just wanna work resistance movements with a double leg would be to, I'm gonna take my hands and put them on Liz's shoulder and then she's gonna keep her back straight and she's just gonna do penetration steps, right? I'm gonna give her resistance. Like this, yep. So that's a partner drill that you could use um, for the double leg. Um, the next one I'm gonna go over, like I said, I'm gonna kind of try to keep going so that you guys can have a bunch to draw from to uh, practice if you're bored during quarantine or whatever. So the natural thing to teach next would be the defense to a double leg, which is gonna be either be to hip in or to sprawl. So I'm gonna show you the sprawl because that's the most likely thing. Um, and then we'll talk about some exercises you can use after that will help simulate that. So if she shoots in with a double leg, right? My goal is to get my hips close to her, get her head down and to get, right? My hips right on top of her head and generally driving in. Now, my feet, I want to have what's known as laces down. If I have my feet like this, try to push through, she can still come into me and get to my leg, right? If I have my laces down, try to push forward, right? It's hard for her to take me anywhere. Now, two things can happen from here in the sprawl. If you happen to sprawl and you don't do it fast enough or you missed and you're back here, right? Uh oh, my hips are like on the ground. I don't necessarily wanna crawl forward here, right? So I'm still putting pressure on the head. The reason I don't wanna to try to readjust here is because a lot of times it's gonna involve me coming up to get my hips here. And then she has access to my leg. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna push on the head, I'm gonna stand up, and I'm gonna get ready to reshoot if she comes up, right? Or to sprawl down again um, to get better position. But if you're too far out, don't try to readjust on the ground. That's just like a tip for more advanced, specifically too. Um, or if you're doing MMA or something, uh, stand back up and either go for a shot again or set something else up. Um, if I land in a good position, a good sprawl, I'm gonna show you a sequence here. Okay, so I hope you guys can see this okay. My shoulder is again gonna be driving here and I'm gonna put pressure into her right with my hips, all right? Try to push forward. I'm gonna take this hand that's going across the back of her neck and I'm gonna stick it in her armpit here. Okay, so if we turn her here. Sorry, let's uh, back up this way a little bit. This, yeah. Okay, so if you see from this angle, I'm sticking it here, right? The reason being, I'm trying to block this arm from coming out and stopping me from going behind her, right? So if I stick it here, right? That gives me a path to go behind, right? She can't, I'm putting pressure on here and I'm driving, 
okay? She can't get to my leg. My leg is far behind, right? Lace is down. I'm gonna anchor myself, okay? Um, be careful with this move. As you go behind, it's tempting to reach here, okay? And the issue is if I reach over her waist, she can trap my arm and roll me. So a safer move generally is to grab either the hamstring here and anchor myself there. And then I can grab my seatbelt or whatever I'm gonna do um, to control. But again, I'm gonna teach you, I like kind of inside the thigh instead because it's less uh, prone to getting rolled. So as you sprawl, pressure in, hip on the side. And we're gonna show you some exercises to practice this, some spinners and stuff in a minute. I'm gonna put my hand in the crook here, blocking the arm, okay? I'm gonna grab behind the leg here, the, the uh, hamstring, and I'm going to simply come around. And then sometimes advanced tip, if you wanna come under the arm and grab wrist control, that's helpful too. And then I can drive into her. Um, so there's a lot of good things from there. You'll start to see where things open up from it. But the most important part of that is armpit, hamstring. Again, if you go over the back, you, a lot of times if somebody knows what they're doing, they're gonna pull your wrist through, you can get rolled. This is a little bit more resist to that um, and a little bit safer way to get to the back. Um, I'll show you a few exercises from uh, these sequences that you can do on your own that relate to either the go behind. Um, and then we're gonna show in a minute what happens if they sprawl on you, how do you get out of that? There's another good wrestling move. Um, Cause these are some of the things that happen like all the time. I would say if you're using wrestling. So for um, what I just showed the go behind, what you can practice are, you know, spinners. So she can come up however she is in turtle. Okay, let's move actually this way a little bit. Okay, and just getting used to applying pressure and I'll show you in a minute how you can do this on your own. Um, you're gonna take your partner and you're gonna start here. And what you're gonna do is just, you're gonna go around to each side using the armpit hamstring right here and then I can come back the other way and I can go on this side and I can drive here I can pull myself here and then you can start going all the way around right I can push your head down I'm just basically literally like a top spinning on her back okay and the most important part of a spinner is the pressure so your chest should be heavy down on the center of her back and I'm just basically pivoting around this point, this like fulcrum. Um, if you have a med ball, could you grab? Perfect. If you have a med ball at home, you can even do it on a pillow if you're super talented, you're closer to the floor, so it's gonna be harder. Um, but you can use this, right? I like to just practice this on my own, this movement, right? I want, notice my butt is not coming up off the ground. So the more I'm like this, the worse it is, because that gives them a closer access to getting to my legs, which I don't want. I don't want them to trap me. So it's really important that you use chest out and then moving around. You know, you can do this all day. It's really exhausting, but it's a super important move for pressure application, which is wrestling, jujitsu, all of them, right? So that is a really good one to use. Um, in terms of drilling sprawls, I want to show one more exercise with that. And then I'm going to go to what happens if they sprawl on you. So to practice a whole sequence, that's going to be useful to a lot of things. Um, what I like to do is simulate someone coming after me. And then what happens if I have to sprawl and get away from them? So what I can do is kind of back up if she's, you can even simulate coming after me. So you're going to see us coming through here, right? I'm going to sprawl here. Slide back here. I can go here and I can come up. So you can use sprawls, you can use butt scoots and you can do them really in any sequence. Sometimes I'll fall on my butt, butt scoot back, uh, technical get up. Sometimes I'll use a sprawl in there and kind of go on my hands, but it's really the whole thing of creating distance. So you can get up and shoot again if you miss a shot or they miss a shot. Um, so it's helpful in that regard. Hopefully that's a good technique for a lot of you guys to practice. Um, so the, the last thing I wanna do with this sequence 
is um, we're going to go from what happens if they sprawl on me. And then I'm going to show you a couple uh, wrestling moves that can be used to kind of spread them out and take the back from the turtle position. So where we're going to go is if she's sprawling on me, okay, how many people have been somewhat in this position, right? You're going to go actually go here and lock your hands and then sprawl your legs back here. Sprawl your legs back, right? So if she's here and sometimes she'll, you can grab your hands together. Sometimes you'll see, yeah, this. Um, what I want to do is sometimes called a sit out or sit through. I'm going to pick a side. I'm going to take my foot and step it up. I'm going to pop my head up as I'm driving this elbow back. And I'm going to bring this leg that's on the other side through, right? So I'm going to almost like I'm starting almost like a lawnmower. Head up, slide through, and then I'm going to come around and I'm going to switch and grab through to the other uh, thigh on the other side. So let me show you what it looks like if you'll face this way. Um, go back a little bit. Yeah. So see this? Okay. So she sprawls me. I'm gonna grab your hands together and be yep. So I'm gonna take this, this hand. If I go this way, right up, head up. I'm gonna here, slide through. I'm gonna come around to the side here and grab. Like I said, I like to go through the thigh on the other side. You could grab over the the belt here. Um, depending on what you're doing, you could go for your seatbelt, like I said, just be careful of getting rolled. Um, I'm going to show you what to go, uh, where to go from there in a second. Um, but I'll show you what this looks like on your own. This is a great one to drill on your own. Um, sit outs or sit throughs. Sometimes you'll see them called hip heists, although a hip heist and wrestling usually is the other way um, when you're trying to get your hips uh, flipping to the ground. But any hip movement is going to be a great drill for wrestling and for jujitsu, obviously. So how you can drill this, you can either go on your hands here or you can start here on your, uh, like you were turtling. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna step up, right? You're gonna take this hand and you're bringing this leg through. And then I'm gonna go this way, same deal. I'm gonna go to the other side, step up and sit through. And then as you get faster, you can kind of go up side to side and you'll learn how to adjust your hips on top of people or break dance, if that's what you want to do. Because <laughs> it kind of looks like a break dance move. Um, again, you can do it from here. This is more of a like a wrestling rest position. If you're a wrestler, you can go here, you know, or again, I can drill it from really any level. Um, I feel like in jujitsu, it's more likely you're obviously going to be in a turtle position. Um, so hopefully again, another helpful drill that you can do on your own that will help some of this. Um, last thing on the ground I'm going to show you, and then I'm just going to do a couple sequences. 720. Perfect. Okay. Doing good on time. So on the ground, if I end up in that turtle position or she ends up in that turtle position, right? Um, a move in wrestling that's important, go this way so we can uh, towards the back. Uh, just face this way. Sorry. No, no. Here. There. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to put it literally um, in her thigh here. Okay. So you can see it's going on the inside of the thigh. And I'm going to try to get my hand. If, if I can't get my hand through here, I'm going to kind of bump her over. And that generally is going to open it up. I'm going to grab her wrist. Okay. So I've got a thigh on this side. My hand is facing backward like this. And the whole goal of a spiral ride is I'm gonna go on the wrist in the thigh like this. And I'm gonna run my legs as I'm doing it. So I'm literally like opening up her body, which gives me either her back or I'll show you in a minute what happens if she bunches up still, I can drive her to the side and get into a side control. So if I go here, put hand here, wrist here, I'm gonna run my legs, right? And I'm gonna flatten her. The show from, let's see, the front will face this way. Okay, I'm gonna come through. I gotta do this a little bit. That's probably better. Okay, so I'm gonna come through underneath. And again, if I can't get that, bumper, she's gonna go here. It's gonna open this wrist, right? And then I've got this hand 
if you can, can I bring you up? Mm -hmm. Right in the thigh here, right? I'm gonna keep pressure. I'm gonna run my feet towards her head. That's gonna open her up. I'm gonna take this back leg and step it over, right? Right now I'm in prime position for a back take. I can drag her over to this side. I already have my hook in on this bottom side. I have the wrist control. If I want to, I can switch to the gi here. I can feed this, wrap it. There's a lot of things that I can do from there. Um, so the spiral ride is really good because again, it can give that wrist control. It breaks them down, which is what we want. Um, and it sets up a lot of great back takes, arm bars, bow and arrows in the gi, a lot of different positions. So that is a good one. Um, you can drill that again with the spinner. It's kind of the same movement where you're uh, going to the side or you can sprawl, right? A lot of times when you get up, you don't just want to like stand up, right? When we sprawl, we want to come up like this, which is kind of the same movement as driving around um, in a spiral ride. It's that sort of motion on the ground, low to the ground, right? Okay. Um, and then the second thing from there, if they don't open up, so I can't get to that. One that I love that's worked a lot for me, I reach through on the outside. I can grab her uh, sleeve here, and then I can grab the uh, pant leg of the gi. I can put my head in her ribs, and I can drive forward, <laughs> right? It opens up side control. Um, it's very hard to stop because you got her two legs trapped. Okay, and I can grab the sleeve right here, pant leg, over, right? And hold on to that leg until you're in a good, generally it's gonna be a scarf hold position probably. They're gonna sit through to, um, but this is one of my favorite positions for arm bars, things like that, um, great control. So I'm a big side control person. If you're a wrestler, you probably like side control. It's pretty natural like progression there to it. Um, and then the last thing on the ground, what do we have? Six minutes, okay. Last thing I wanna show on the ground is just a real quick tip, again, for maybe more advanced, if you wanna turn around. Instead of um, grabbing seat bell grip that we generally do, right, here, um, what I like to do sometimes are double underhooks, which is a kind of a classic wrestling thing if you're doing boots, which is essentially hooks and you're riding on their back. Usually you've got both hands, if I face her forward here, right? Um, and now, she can try to get away. It's very hard to defend against this, right? She can go over here. I can keep my legs out even with this position, right? I don't have to be, now I'm gonna be pulling her back into me, okay? And But it, try to get away from me. You can go anyway, you can go that way. I'm gonna try to pull her back. Eventually, I'm gonna be able to get a hook in and then I can kind of transition to class BC belt. I can get some chokes here. Um, but I think it's an underutilized, sorry, uh, way to control the back. And it's helpful because again, your hips don't get stuck as much as they do in like a seatbelt grip. Um, so we're running short on time. So I guess the last thing I'm gonna show is five finishes real quick. I can do this in five minutes to um, in arm drag set up uh, for some takedowns. Um, this one's for a little more advanced. It opens up some angles. If you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, you're gonna learn them eventually. It's helpful in wrestling as it is in striking and everything. So um, what I wanna do, okay, I'm gonna take my hand. She's gonna come and she's gonna be probably going for a collar, going for my head, going for something, right? For my sleeve, whatever she's going for. I wanna get my hand to her sleeve here and I wanna get my opposite hand to her tricep or the cloth here, right? I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna shuck her body, right? This is gonna open up an amazing angle for a lot of things. The, and like I said, there's five finishes I'm gonna show you in the last five minutes. The first is a single leg. So if she's open here, I drop down, my head is inside and I can finish it. I can either run the pipe, right? Um, if she resists, another great finish to a single is she turns away. I can stick this hand right through, grab her knee, and I can drive her forward. 
Okay, so that's a Navy. Um, if you want to look that up, I can also post links for you guys to all these things if you want. Um, also open here, if I grab for the single, she turns into me. Right here, my head goes to the outside. I've got the perfect time for a double, right? Okay, so if that opens up, she steps in, I switch my head and I drive to the side. As we talked about before, I'm just on the opposite side as I was before. Um, that was three of them. The fourth, arm drag, open it up. Let's say I can pop her hand up and go get in deep. I'm gonna show you what a body lock is. Okay, so I've got, I'm in here. Okay, I cleared her arm. My head is to her chest. My hips are in and squeezing my knees. I've got, I actually want this palm down, bleeding into her ribs. It's very uncomfortable. And this is a gable grip here, right? I squeeze, I lift, I elevate a little bit, and I bend, okay? Now, one tip on that is let go before you hit the ground. You're gonna feel a breaking point where she folds. Um, so as soon as you feel that fold and she's going, you wanna let go, because if you get trapped, it's hard to regain position, your arm gets trapped under there. So there's like a critical point. Uh, wrestling is playing around and feeling pressure. So do that, um, kind of feel it when they fall, and then you can uh, decide where you wanna go from there. The last one I'm gonna show you is if I can get behind. I'm gonna arm drag, right? Let's say I can't get my head under here. It's fine, I'm coming behind here. Okay, I can either hip in, same way as I did before, take her up and take her over the front. And again, you're gonna put your knee out, so you're basically elevating right over that leg. So very similar kind of body lock, but you're lifting up and going forward, right? And it drives her right down. And then the last thing, if I get around the back, this is actually six, I guess. Notice it's a very utilizable position because it goes to everything. Let's say I get around to this side. I can take this outside leg, stick it through right there. I'm gonna take this and hop. I'm just gonna roll her here, right? I have control, we're back, of her the entire time. My leg is still here and now if she sits up to me, right? If she turns in, I'm in mount. If she goes the other way, I've got back control, right? Uh, again, it sets up a lot of awesome things. So it looks like it's 7.30. Thank you, Liz. I think I got through hopefully most of what I wanted to. Um, if you guys have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Got a ton more stuff if you ever want to reach out to me or whatever and ask questions. I am more than happy to answer what I can. If not, I know enough people that can and I will ask them. So thank you everyone. First of all is when you're drilling, talk to your drilling partner about like percentage levels that you wanna go. So my thing is, like I said, I've had a lot of surgeries. So like, I'm very careful with it even now um, cause I get nervous with that. So make sure that as you're drilling, you don't want the person going like 150% resistance. You want somebody maybe going at like 30%. You're giving a look, but you're not giving them crazy pressure and you're gonna do most of your drilling at that level. Um, so it's nothing to be afraid of. The second thing uh, that I think is just advice to getting used to it is just like playing around with wrestling because wrestling is like 90% time on the mat. It's just like experimenting, just kind of like jujitsu is like a live role, um, learning where the balance is, um, like feeling where their hips are. I think that's just literally like you see little kids wrestling all the time and they're really good at it because they don't think about it technically. They kind of just play and see where their bodies are. I would say just, just kind of doing that at first so that you're not really intimidated by it. Because when I started, I was like, oh my God, I don't have the technique perfectly. And I would fixate on that. And then I was like ramming my head into somebody because I wasn't focused on where I was or like where their body was. So don't be too focused on the technique at first. I know that's counterintuitive, but <laughs> that's an awesome question. I love it. So my recommendation for smaller people, because wrestling, that's the great thing about wrestling and jiu-jitsu, we come in all sizes and shapes and, um, you know, a lot of times people don't account for that. So I try to show a wide array, array of things here. Um, if you're smaller, 
I think that timing and speed are going to be a factor for you. Um, I would recommend sort of like taking shots from the outside and creating those angles I talked about, because that's going to put your opponent off balance enough that it's not even you moving them. You're moving almost around them and creating them falling in a certain way. So you're going to want to stick to, you know, even things I can show you real quick, a cool single that I didn't get to, but if you're a smaller person, that's a great one. And you're afraid of getting sprawled on is a sweep single. So if she's coming in and I want to get to that, le that leg behind me, I pull her. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knee down. This back leg's going to swing around. Notice I'm nowhere in a sprawlable position. She can't sprawl to the side. There's no way she can land on top of me. Now I'm going to hug this tight and I'm going to come in and kind of crawl up her body. So I wouldn't be trying if you're like the smaller opponent, maybe a body lock. I mean, a body lock will work on a larger person too, if they're not flexible. Um, but I wouldn't do anything where you're lifting over yourself type thing. If it's significantly larger, the low singles, you know, you could do, so you can change levels with everything that we talked about as well. Um, but to try to stay out of the head on shots. I wouldn't do a blast double on a larger opponent. Um, well now, because my timing's gotten better because of my injury, that sweep single, I hit a lot, um, a knee pick, which I was going to get to, too. uh, real quick. I can show you across is good. Um, it's a little higher level, but if you're at that level, um, if I can pull her down here and pull her towards me, I can go right for this leg and run her right over. Right. So, sorry, I'm spelled into the camera as I'm doing it. Um, you can pick the ankle, you can pick the leg. So I think that's pretty high percentage again, cause it's just a great, the angles are really helpful. Get them off balance, disrupt the angle. <laughs> it's really hard times for everybody right now. Um, the jujitsu jiu community, the MMA community, wrestling community, so many like beautiful things were happening. And I think it's one of the best places to find community and support. So I, I think we need to like keep that up and however we can. So even if schools temporarily shut down, anything you guys can do to support each other, to keep going, um, we need to make it happen because we need this now more than ever. I think coming out of this, there's a lot of people with just stress and anxiety and there's no better sport for, you know, I, I have PTSD myself, this is awareness month. So I remember being at your seminar, a lot of women talked about primarily, a lot of them were traumatized from something, which is why we do this. So, you know, keep supporting each other, love each other, and wrestle and do jujitsu and MMA and punch each other in the face yeah. in a loving way. I am on Instagram, melissa.gardner.182. Don't ask. I was just like copying over my Facebook something and that's what the name is. So it's T that way. But again, it's melissa.gardner.182. You'll see a picture of me punching and like my face looking crazy. That's me. Um, feel free to follow. I'd be happy to answer like anything. Um, and then I'm just Melissa Gardner at uh, Facebook too.